Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrim, and I've been getting this question asked to me a hell of a lot, especially with the 7.1.5 coming out very, very, very soon, just a January away, and a lot of people are wondering which spec of Rogue is going to be the best. First of all, I have no fucking idea, because it's not patch 7.1.5, so we'll have to just let the patch happen and let the meta take over, but I can make a hypothesis, which is an educated guess from an uneducated bastard, about the state of rogues in 7.1.5, but this video is going to be way bigger than that. Way bigger. I want to talk a little bit about these auras that Blizzard has been adding, as you will be able to see in Emerald Champion, like the link I provided down below, and these auras are very interesting. As far as we saw, if you look at the Outlaw Rogue aura, it says, increases direct damage done by 16%. Does it actually increase your damage on PTR compared to life? Yeah, my abilities are just simply hitting harder. And if you go on Wowhead to check out the actual aura, it says, my aura for Outlaw Rogue, for example, affects Cannibal Barrage, Ghost and Strike, Killing Spree, Death Row Above, Ambush Between the Eyes, Run Through Pistol Shot, and Saber Slash. So basically all my abilities, main abilities, as well as talents, that are increase my damage. So effectively the buffed Outlaw for PvE. So when we take a look at these auras, I think there's something a lot of players are going to want to pay attention to come patch 7.1.5. And this could be like really, really exciting stuff, but also could be very boring and playing forward and nothing we can really do about it as a community. But if you take a look at the MMO Champion link that I have, look at the Unholy Death Knight one, it has increased damage done by 6%, so direct damage by 6, dot damage by 6%, mod ranged attack speed 50%. I have no idea what the 50 is about, is it like this minus 50, plus 50, or just 50? I'm not sure what that is, but that's some stats that we've never seen in the past before, or I haven't seen in the past before, and it's interesting to see what this is going to come out to be. If you take a look at the Feral one, that's just the most creative one. I have no idea what I'm looking at. Increases direct damage by 8%. Increases dot damage by 8%. Increases cooldown 1.5 minutes. I have no idea. Is that buff? Are they making their abilities longer cooldown? Shorter cooldown? I have no idea. Increases direct damage done by 20%. Uh, increases dot damage by tw plus 20%. Increases power cost plus 20%. I don't even know if that's more energy or mana that they have to spend on abilities or something. Uh, increases spell effectiveness plus 50, uh, mod range attack speed uh, 50, mod range attack speed 50 again. I was like, what? What are all these auras, man? This looks interesting, you know? So a lot of this kind of stuff has been added in pat in the next patch, and we're kind of going to be taking a look at um, everything that's going to be happening. And yes, apparently aura modifies cooldown, Mookin form mo has a modified cooldown, and Incarnation has a modified cooldown as well, so... It'll be interesting that Blizzard is actually changing cooldowns and uh, literally the duration of a cooldown of an ability as well as all the other abilities in general for different specs. And they're doing it in like a kind of, they bundle up all the abilities that a class has and can modify them with like damage, cooldown, all this. It's just interesting how Blizzard is taking a little bit more of a detailed approach instead of just buffing a certain ability, nerfing a certain ability. They can bundle all the basic abilities of a class and nerf them together to change his DPS. That's interesting. I think that's actually a pretty cool idea. So in general, a lot of classes are getting buffed in 7.1.5. So we have these auras that are coming out, which are basically buffs of sorts, and they do more than just damage increases. They literally change in effectiveness of your spec in general. I think it's cool that they did it spec-specific spec instead of like class-specific, because then it just shows that the team is a little bit more intuitive on uh, each spec. And, uh, or at least attempt to be a little bit more intuitive with each spec. Then we have the fact that they are accessible in PvP. Because when you go into PvP, you can definitely see the number differences. Uh, and I'll have a clip for that. I ran a PTR arena, uh, Skirm, and then I ran a Skirm on the U, uh, the live servers. And the damage of an outlaw rogue, I mean, the damage difference is like, for Saber Slash, it's like 83 versus 100 on PTR. So like, the damage baseline is up there. Uh, the damage of my run throughs, I guess, is up there, but with Deeper Strat being nerfed, it kind of like, you know, bounces itself down. Uh, my Between the Eyes is buffed, so that's kind of cool, because uh, it's a crit of it. It's still a little bit more effective. Yeah, so that's very interesting. Pistol Shot, it got a little bit more buffed, so it's like a sustained damage kind of buff. So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, then we have Subtlety Rogue, they got, what, 9%. Assassination, they got 7% in general. That's just been flat, and that's just been, that's just been sitting there for a while. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the actual buffs and how are they going to make rogues any different. If they're going to make any specs more effective, less effective, or whatever. Uh, and that's where the, uh, I guess the big question lies in. What I think these changes are going to do is they're going to homogenize rogues a little bit. 
by buffing all of your baseline abilities it basically makes everybody a little bit stronger in pvp and by buffing different aspects like the dot damage of uh, assassination and subtlety by a certain percent and the direct damage of outlaws since outlaws is all about direct damage and buffing the abilities that they are buffing they bring in more damage so in a way like outlaw for example with deeper strat nerf your burst is going to be a little bit weaker in terms of your direct run throughs but those saber slashes combined with run throughs are going to make a little bit more burst damage than you normally see so so it say let's say saber slash run through saber slash run through and if they nerf the run throughs then it's like you have a kind of a weak saber slash to set up run through weak run through coming through but now you're going to have a solid saber slash solid run through solid saber slash solid run through so you're changing up the uh, the game a little bit in terms of what abilities are you know providing the most amount of damage for you so it just makes it a little bit more reliable and i guess i say the word homogenizing but i guess it's more reliability but in a way it is homogenization a little bit more to the homogenization they nerfed the true bearing and how it functions i'm pretty sure it's a pve change more than anything but they nerfed your defenses so your cooldown reduction true bearing does not get your defenses back at all same thing goes for blind so in a way outer world no longer has this like advantage in terms of defensive and cc over the other specs giving it like that potential edge right to be able to blind and set up into a, a sap a lot more often than a healer in an arena or even a battleground so you are losing that edge but you are gaining reliable damage so in a way all three specs of rogue are going to be basically the same in terms of the defensives and cc not one of them is going to have extra cooldowns except for subtlety who will have the uh the buff for uh whenever you're in stealth or uh using shadow dance where you can get your cooldowns back a little bit faster or if you are, for example, Assassination, who just has Cloak back up uh, a lot faster than others. I think it has a reduction of like 30, 30 seconds or so, maybe like 20, 10. It's a shorter Cloak uh, for certain. So you'll have those little nuances, but nothing amazing as that of an Outlaw Rogue, where you can basically rotate your cooldowns and rotate your combo points in order to get cooldowns back faster to have these amazing 2v1 situations. Like, for example, on a screen. I run into a warlock and um, run into a mage right afterwards and the only reason I was able to beat the mage is because I got the cooldown reduction through bearing and I was able to cycle my combo points and cycle my cooldowns together in order to utilize the uh, cooldown reduction for defenses. So that was all fun and exciting. But what you're trading out is instead of being able to you know outlast your enemy defensively, you'll simply be hitting harder with saber slashes, run throughs and especially between the eyes. So when you have cooldowns, you're hitting hopefully next to what a demon hunter would be hitting minus the cleave damage but that'll be mm, i guess an optimistic view of it we don't know exactly how strong we'll be in pvp but the fact that our damage is going affecting us from like 80k uh saber slash to 100k and same thing for pistol shots especially when we get so many of them our melee attacks our mastery hits are between the eyes every time we set up our run throughs in general i guess everything is just hitting a little bit harder so it is an inherent advantage in terms of just damage alone. So it's a guess is the question for the player. How do you feel about this change? And this is just outlaw. I'm just uh, this is just outlaw. I was talking about outlaw this whole time. Let's talk about the other specs. The fact that assassination got a blind homogenizes the specs completely. So we have assassination that has already pre-established good sustain, good burst, and a blind. So the idea was okay. So this is going to be the best spec to play for PvP might not be the i mean it's probably going to be the answer but not might not be the answer that everybody's looking for if everybody else is getting buffed in the same form of damage so let's say effectively an assassination rogue subtlety rogue and an outlaw rogue will have similar damage in pvp and then a few nuances change like for example assassination has a lot of sustain and burst uh and then a little bit of cc while subtlety has the massive cc with the ability to cheap shot multiple targets and sap out of you know without having stealth up but they don't have quite the amazing burst of an assassination and then we have outlaw who has a little bit of that offensive ability cooldown reduction because you still have the cooldown reduction for your offensive abilities so you can line up a lot more often but you don't have quite the sustain i mean you have decent sustain but not quite maybe the sustain i don't know they're just homogenizing all the specs making giving them everybody as much of damage as possible and as much of cc as possible so then there's differences between the specs again and lesser. In a way, that's good and bad for the game. From a PvP perspective, when it comes to having a reliable spec to play, I think this is one of the best changes ever. Because then everybody who is playing WoW and everybody who's playing whatever spec you are playing, whatever spec of choice, you are able to play that spec 
without really having to worry about like oh well this other spec has all these other nicks and crannies bells and whistles so i probably should be playing so it just won't make a, di a difference so let's play people that are running around trying to figure out the best spec they're like wow my game i i suck at world of workout but if i played the right spec i'd be doing so much better kind of like the people that rely on like the whole idea that you need to play a certain spec in order to perform well i think there'll be a lot less of that so a lot less of that excuse like well if i was playing assassination i'd be performing better kind of um yeah i also want to say what's the, what i think is happening to the game with all the changes that are coming out i feel like i'm going to be a little bit more comfortable playing outlaw i won't be as defensively uh capable so basically we're playing it a lot like an assassination or a subtlety rogue popping my defenses when i need to and i won't have the ability to or i won't have to worry about having to the right buffs as an outlaw you basically just roll the bones whatever buffs you get as all for damage go for it because when i get crit that means my abilities crit more often I get extra saber slash swings, I get more sustained damage, I get extra auto attack speed and leech, I can heal myself sort of and uh, have more damage for sustain. I have more energy, I'm just bash, uh, lashing out more abilities at my enemies. I get cooldown reduction, that means I can get a general rush back up faster and a vanish if I need to escape. So then there won't be as much of a difference, it won't be as much of an issue and people might uh, I guess feel a little bit less of like, oh you need to be a certain spec, you need to have certain buffs. There will be, I think it will be easier to play all three specs of Rogue. Because all of them will inherently be dealing decent damage, no matter what you're doing. And there'll be difference of playstyle, but not as much of difference of effectiveness, minus a few small nuances, like for example, Shadow Dance and the effectiveness of that and the utilities it can provide, compared to Outlaw Rogues and the tricks of trade that they can run in arenas, compared to Assassination and the amazing power that they have in terms of just straight out spread pressure, bleeds, and the cooldowns, the sheer amount of cooldowns and the damage that those bring. So it's actually interesting, and I'm excited for 7.1.5. Even for PvE, I'm a little bit more excited because now it's like, oh, Outlaw is getting buffed, oh, uh, Blunderbuss is getting buffed. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. So for PvE, I think this won't be too much, at least on a rogue perspective. I don't know about other classes and specs, and hopefully Blizzard, you know, manages everything out. I know we got a Fire Mage in our guild, and he's not quite sure how it's going to go for him. Might need to play Arcane or Frost, or something, you know, but even thinking of rerolling specs. But this turns out to be maybe one of the better buffs, and... I guess my answer to which spec of rogue that I think will be the best for 7.1.5, this long-winded, the longest-winded answer that you could watch in a goddamn YouTube video by your favorite clickbaity YouTuber, Dalarus. Um, I think all three of them will be even better. But if you have to pick one, if you really, really want to be safe, I guess you can go assassination because it's proven good in the past and it's basically getting a blind without too many changes um so that will be good but i honestly think i honestly think all three specs are going to be even more viable than they were so you should honestly play whatever the hell you want to play and yeah <laughs> that's really about it and i feel like i wouldn't have said same thing if it wasn't for these r's that were added and then testing out my damage on ptr and it's just like wow i'm comfortable i didn't have this gimmick of like yeah, let me just get cooldown reaction and rotate my defenses i didn't have that gimmick i just hit him and i hit hard and it's like okay cool I can do that. I can fucks with it. So it's, it's exciting. So any of you worrying about rogues and whatever, worrying about your damage, everybody's technically getting slightly buffed and it's translating into PvP even though in minor amounts and uh, it should make too much of a difference which spec you play. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think about these buffs, updates, uh, the auras, and I'll see you guys in the next one.